Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Emma, I'm an artist and DIYer, and today I'm gonna to be showing you four different gift ideas made out of polymer clay. The holidays are right around the corner. I know I'm DIYing all of my gifts. My friends and family know that they are not gonna get something store-bought from me, and polymer clay is so versatile and it makes it the perfect thing to make gifts out of. There has totally been a huge resurgence of polymer clay. You see it everywhere. There's this kind of earring craze. I love polymer clay. I started working with it maybe two or three years ago. There are, however, no earring tutorials in this video. I'm gonna show you four different ideas on other things you can make out of clay. I also wanted to include different levels of difficulty, so I have some that are easier and one that is a little bit harder. I am in love with how all of these turned out. I can't wait to show you. I hope you like them as much as I do. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe, follow me on here, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, all the other places, I have much more to show you. But let's get right into it. First tutorial is a modern wall hanging. I've seen a bunch like this on Instagram. I think they're actually normally made out of wood, at least the top part is, but I wanted to do a clay version. This one is so versatile. You don't have to do the exact shape that I did. I definitely recommend looking up inspiration, but a wall hanging is such a fun, easy gift to do. I feel like everyone kind of likes <laughs> wall hangings and this is definitely a beginner project. I started off with some Sculpey 3, which definitely worked really well for this project because it's super soft, but it got really hard and was really durable for this. Just warmed it up in sections just because it is really hard at the beginning and then kind of rolled that into a giant ball and started rolling it out. I did have to remove my rings. I was realizing that they were denting it. So whoopsie daisy, definitely don't do this in rings. Once I rolled it out to a good thickness, I started playing around with different shapes. You can do so many different things with this. Like all of these would be super, super cool to hang yarn from, but I eventually landed on this kind of wonky eight shape. Initially I had the part that connected at the top and I kind of, spread them together there but i did end up switching it to the bottom because that part will be covered by the yarn so i did some <laughs> adjusting as you can see it was a little bit harder because it had cooled down a little bit but eventually i got the eight shape that i wanted i still felt like this wasn't enough so i took some more clay and rolled it out to about the same width and i did kind of like a half circle that went around the middle where it's a little bit tighter and i just again smushed it in there <laughs> and hoped for the best but it seems to be adhered really well once it's dried. After that, I baked it and it was nice and solid. And then I didn't really like the color. So I took some raw sienna, white, and a tiny bit of brown. And I just painted the whole thing. And it kind of looks like a wood texture. I grabbed some yarn from the dollar store and measured out a length that seemed good. I would probably go a little bit longer next time just in case, because you will end up having to trim it with all the uneven edges. And I took that one piece and used it as kind of a ruler for all the rest of my pieces. So I cut just a bunch of pieces all to that same length. I thought it would be fun to add another color, so I grabbed some blue, which is a complementary color to orange, measured it against the orange, and then cut a bunch of that in that same length. Once I was happy with what I cut, I made sure all of it was centered and then looped it through the widest part of my clay, again making sure all of it's about the same length. Kind of evened it out and then I did this knot that I learned from macrame where you put the end of the knot up, you make a little loop U shape and then wrap a bunch of string around it and then you'll eventually just have that loop at the bottom which you'll put your yarn through and then you'll pull that string that was left up and it'll take the end of that yarn in and so it's kind of a hidden little knot. And then I'm gonna do that same technique where I put a piece of yarn up, make a little U shape, and then wrap around it right across the middle. This one's a little bit easier to see, but I'm just wrapping, 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 and then I will eventually put the end of that string through the loop and again, pull and cut off both sides. I made sure it was all even before cutting it, kind of twisting those ends to the back. I really love the way this one turned out. Again, you can do so many different things with it, but I feel like it feels so modern yet boho at the same time. I think this would be a really great gift and it was so, so simple. 
So for most of these tutorials, I ended up using Sculpey 3, which I'm pretty new to. I only started using it a month or two ago. Normally I use Sculpey Primo, which is a lot better quality because it's a little bit more flexible. It's bendable once baked, whereas Sculpey 3 is a lot easier to sculpt with, to get like interesting shapes with. However, it is a little bit more brittle. So some of these are a little bit more brittle. I'll tell you per project, which one I would recommend for Sculpey 3 Primo, or maybe there's a better clay. I'm not sure if those are the only two I've ever worked with. I think this next tutorial is also definitely beginner level. I've done this sort of thing before on TikTok and it went mega viral. I took a broken bowl that was my great grandma's and I kind of made a bezel around it out of polymer clay and it turned out so well. I actually made earrings for that video, which you can do as well. Feel free to head to my TikTok to check that out. But for this, I wanted to do rings. You see polymer clay earrings everywhere, but for this, I wanted to do rings. I think rings are so much fun and it's a great gift if I do say so myself. So for this tutorial, I made some rings out of glass and clay. I got this bag of crushed glass from Dollar Tree and then I'm using Sculpey Primo clay this time. The color doesn't matter because I'll be coloring it again later. I chose a gem that I liked. This one was kind of square, so it kind of reminded me of like an emerald cut. I started warming it up with my hands and I rolled it out into a thin line and used my rolling pin to flatten it out a little bit. This doesn't have to be perfect because the clay is pretty flexible and also you can just put it on a different finger if it doesn't end up fitting the one that you measured it for. I did try to make it a little bit shorter than expected because this step where I smush it together might make it a little bit smaller. I then took the excess and wrapped it around my piece of glass and then smushed it along the bottom. So there's one side facing the top that has no clay on it and then the bottom is covered in clay. I used an X-Acto knife to straighten out my edges and clean it out a little bit and then also create little dent details along it which kind of distracts from any potential messiness. I put it in the oven for 275 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes and then I use this Rust-Oleum spray paint to paint the edges. You might want to also use polyurethane or some protective sealant to give these a top coating so it doesn't degrade over time and then I used E6000 to attach them together. I love how these turned out especially with other rings. I made a few of them and they look so good in person. I'm obsessed. You can get really creative with this and use different colored glass or broken pieces of glass. The world is your oyster. This next tutorial is slightly more difficult, but I still think it's totally doable for a beginner. If you're new to polymer clay, I still think you would definitely be able to do this next one. I saw a candle holder that I really liked at Anthropology. It's no longer listed on the website, at least that I could find. So I'm not sure what the exact price was, but I'm sure making it yourself would be cheaper. The only thing that I would say is the one I made, I made it out of Sculpey 3 where it probably should have been made out of Primo because it was a little bit more brittle than I would have liked and I do think Sculpey Primo, I've made tons of mushrooms out of it before which is what this project is going to be, a mushroom candle holder. I've made mushrooms out of it before and it was really easy to work with. You don't really need to use Sculpey 3 which is more moldable for this. I think you will definitely have success with Sculpey Primo. <laughs> yeah, getting our clays confused over here. It's a lot of clay. If I were to give this to someone, I would give it to them with some museum wax to make sure the bottom is stuck and then maybe a fake candle or recommend a fake candle just because, you know, you don't want to inherit that liability of giving a candle holder that someone could potentially knock over because it's not actually metal, whereas the real one was metal, so it's a little bit heavier. Or you could also put mushrooms all the way around it to make sure it's a little bit more even. The one from Anthropology has mushrooms on one side of it, so I was copying that, but if you want to make it more even, you can have mushrooms growing out of all of the nooks and crannies and crevices. But either way, I think it turned out really cute and here's how I made this mushroom candle holder. First, you have to warm up the clay and then I use my fingers and an actual candle to just shove in this kind of ball that I made and form the base so it was the appropriate size. You'll wanna double check again at the end to see if the candle still fits because it might change shape a little bit as you're sculpting it. I started smoothing it out and now we're gonna add roots. I only added one to the side where the mushrooms are coming out of, but if I were to do it again, I would add it on all sides just for a little bit of extra stability. I use this tool, which I think is actually meant for your Cricut. I think it's a weeding tool, but you can use a toothpick or whatever you have lying around to create some lines for texture in the bark. 
I then rolled out some pieces for the bases of the mushroom and then attached them. You wanna make sure they are thicker on the side that's closest to the tree at the base of them and then thinner as they go to the top. I'm gonna to attach the top of the mushrooms after I bake it. I feel like that's gonna help me not weigh it down too much as it's in the oven. For the mushroom caps, I made a little ball and then stuck my thumbs in it and rotated it to hollow it out a little bit. And then I took that same tool and made these little indents all the way around it just to give it some more interesting texture. When I went to go bake it, I wanted to make sure that all of the mushrooms are in the proper position. So I crumpled up some foil to make sure they sat up how I wanted them and they didn't sag in the oven. I baked everything at 275 for 20 minutes and then I used E6000 and hot glue to attach the tops of the mushroom to the bases. And then I used my favorite Rust-Oleum metallic spray paint to spray paint the whole thing gold. After this, it still needed a little bit of dimension. So I took some black paint, black slash brown paint and painted it and then wiped it off. So everywhere that there was a crevice, it kind of sat in and it gave it a lot of dimension. This was actually a suggestion from someone on Instagram. So thank you. Actually, multiple people suggested this. So thank you to them. My mom was one of them. So shout out to you, Megs. And here is the finished result. I think it turned out pretty darn well. This last tutorial is definitely the hardest, but you don't have to be an expert to do this. I did a version of it on TikTok. I actually made a skull, a, like a bird skull and a hairpin. It went mega viral on TikTok, Pinterest, and Instagram, which I've never had anything do well on Instagram before, honestly. And I had a bunch of people asking me how to make it. So this is a bobcat skull version of it. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit more complicated, but I actually had someone on TikTok recreate it. I don't think she was an expert clay user or sculptor, and she was able to recreate it. So I do think you can recreate this if you like it and you want to. So for this one, I made a wall hanging out of a bobcat skull and attached it to a plaque and I think it turned out so, so cool. You'll start by warming up your clay. I'm still using Sculpey 3 for this. I rolled out a thin layer and then I actually used a Christmas tree ornament, a Christmas ornament that it was just the first round object I could find to sculpt around it. And then I used an X-Acto knife to cut out my eyes. I probably should have used foil to cover the Christmas ornament so I could have a little bit easier of removal, but you know, you live and you learn. At this point, I'm gonna start building out. I was looking at several photos of bobcat skulls to do this, so I'm building the nose and kind of the jaw. There's a bridge along the eye, so I made sure I pinched around the eyes to create that bridge. And this is one of probably three or four times that I cut the nose. This piece did involve a lot of reworking and nothing was permanent. I didn't get attached to any of the shapes I made uh, because I knew they would probably change. So I just used tiny pieces of clay that I would cut off, roll up, and then attach to adjust the shape. So I made the skull a little bit bigger and added jaws. And then I'm also adding some teeth here. And then I added a second fang and eventually I'll get four fangs. Of course, I had to cut my nose again. This was probably still not even the last time. And I added a place for kind of the teeth to go. For whatever reason, my hand was outside the screen as I added the teeth, but I just kind of rolled up little balls and added the teeth. I added jaws and just kept building up, especially from behind because I needed something for this skull to sit on. I very carefully removed the skull, which again did not go very well because I didn't have any foil attached to it, but I was able to rework everything and kind of cut off the excess pieces as needed. And from this point on, I was mostly just smoothing stuff out. That's a really nice thing about this clay is that you can just use your fingers to smooth it out and it's really, really soft and malleable. Once I got the shape that I wanted, I put it in the oven at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. And then I got ready to paint it. I used raw sienna, white, and brown. I did have the bottom burn a little bit. I'm still trying to figure out this clay, so not sure why that happened, but I just went ahead and painted the whole thing. I did end up using some brown to kind of accent where there might be a few shadows. So I painted the inside with a little bit of brown and I took my detail brush and filled it in around the teeth just to make it look a little bit more aged. And I really did 
did find that this helped a lot. I grabbed this plaque from the craft store and I always like to sand them because they're always terrible quality before I use just regular acrylic paint in brown to paint the whole thing. I just like this color a little bit better. I think it's more mature. And then I use some E6000 to glue it right onto the plaque and I think it looks freaking fantastic. I'm so excited how this turned out. I think this is potentially the best thing I have ever made. I know it's a little bit on the trickier side, but if you just keep working with it, I think you'll definitely be able to get it. I kept shaping it off camera. I think the only part you can't see is I added a tiny strip in between the nose, kind of underneath. So if you see that at the end, that's the only part that I mess with a little bit off camera. You could actually do a lot of things with this. Initially, I wanted it to be a candle holder, but I was already doing the mushroom candle holder. So I decided to mount it, but you could have it be a candle holder. You could put a tea light under it. You could do a lot of things with this. You could do the hairpin idea. This is super, super versatile. So you don't feel limited. I would definitely use this Sculpey 3 for this because it's so much easier to sculpt. Like, it's a different universe than the Sculpey Primo. So definitely recommend it for that just because it's just gonna be mounted to a wall. So I'm not worried about it being particularly brittle. I hope you liked these gift ideas. If there's anything you wanna see, let me know. Make sure you drop a comment, like, follow, whatever you wanna do, please support me. I hope you like these videos. Thank you so much for watching and happy making.